before we start this video, a large thank you to Tyrant, Gresgors, DX, Tom, Michael, Daglin, a name I unfortunately can't pronounce. Thank you for the support, my friend. Ludwig, another name I cannot pronounce. Thank you very much for the support, my friend. Friendly Robot, Poison MC, and Revolting Robot for their support on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. And as always, an immense thank you to Halo Burner for their continued support of the channel this month on Patreon. It is sincerely and greatly appreciated, my friend, and I hope you enjoy the video. Hello, everybody. So I'm about to show you an example of a repost, which is what we're going to cover in this video. And I want to say that if you bought any of our animation packs for weapons, I'm going to upload those repost animations uh, Saturday, but it will take Unity a couple weeks to review it. So don't worry if you don't have them right now, uh, but they will be uploaded if you have any of our weapon packs. So as you can see, I'm in Nephilim right now, and boom, I'm just going to hit him, stance break, and there is the repost. So that is what it will look like. Now, the repost animation I just showed you is the repost animation you're going to get in the weapon pack. I also have a set of animations in the description you can download if you are a patron, and those are a little bit different. But the one I just showed you in the video now will be in the weapon pack. I'll probably throw these uh, in the description in the weapon pack as well. As always, though, you don't need these animations to follow along the video. If you have your own, that's perfectly fine, too. You just might have to set up a little bit differently. That is always fine. Okay, back to the video. Hello, everybody, and today we're going to continue with our critical damage system, and we're going to actually handle how to do a repost today, which you can do after you stance break someone or parry them. So go to the character combat manager, and let's start by making a public virtual void attempt repost. And then we're going to make this require a raycast hit. Now, when you're performing a critical strike, you're always searching for a backstab or a repost. So we're going to make our search function first that will lead into this function if you find a viable target. So let's make a public virtual void in case you want to act differently in other classes. Uh, attempt critical attack. And then we're just going to start by making a comment up here. Use to attempt a backstab or a post so we can keep this all clean and organized. All right, so inside here, we're going to start by saying if character dot is performing action return, we don't want to allow a search for a critical strike if we are already performing another action. Next, right below that, we're going to say if character dot character network manager dot current stamina dot value is less than or equal to zero, we're going to return because we don't want to allow the character to perform a critical strike if they are out of stamina. All right, cool. So after we pass those two checks, and those are the only two that come to mind right now, we're going to make a an array of raycast hit variables. We're going to call it hits, and we're going to equal that to physics dot raycast all. We're using all just in case we get the raycast stuck on ourselves or some other weird piece of geo in between us and a potential target. So we just want to basically search for every potential hit between the start point and the end point, and then find a target from that. So we're going to say character dot character combat manager dot lock on transform dot position is the starting area of the raycast. Uh, and then we're going to make the direction character dot transform dot transform direction vector three dot forward. Now, through a lot of testing, uh, I found 0 0.7 is a good distance for this, but I'm not going to leave that as a magic number. We'll make a variable for it. Uh, you can change it if you see fit. And then I'm going to use a world utility manager dot instance dot get character layers to make this only go on the character layers. So I am going to make a variable for this right now, but. I do find that, at least in Nephilim, 0 0.7 is a great number. If you want to make it a little bit more forgiving, you can increase that number. If you want to make it a little bit more unforgiving, you can decrease that number. So header critical attack, serialized field float, and I am going to initialize that at 0 0.7. I'm going to call the variable critical attack distance check. So again, this is how far that raycast is going to extend out of the starting location uh, to where it can hit another character. So obviously, the bigger this is, the further away you can be from the character that you're trying to hit. And likewise, the shorter it is, the closer you have to be to them. Keep in mind things like the size of your character controller squatter because there's only so close you can get. Uh, next, I'm going to make a for loop, and I'm going to go through each of these hits in the potential raycast hits array. Going to make a comment on what we're doing, so it's very clear. Going to make a singular raycast hit variable. Going to equal that to hits i. So again, we're making a for loop, and we're checking each of these hits one by one and giving them their own variable, and then we're going to do some logic with this. So we're going to take this hit variable now. We're going to search for a target. We're going to say Right below that, um, character manager, local variable, target character is equal to hit dot transform dot get component character manager. And again, apologies if you can hear my dogs in the background. They're around me right now, and they're just kind of walking in circles. If target character does not equal null, then we're going to say if target character is equal to us, we want to continue and check the next target. We don't want to be able to repost ourselves. So if the character in one of the hits right here from the Raycast array is us, just move on to the next character. 
Next, we're going to do a check to see if we can even attack this character by using our World Utility Manager. So we're going to say, if we can't damage this target, uh, we're going to use our World Utility Manager, can I damage this target? And we're going to pass our character group and their character group. Then we want to continue and move on to the next potential hit in the arrays of hits. So again, if we can't damage this target, continue. And I'll make a comment here, if we cannot damage the character that is... Uh, target it, continue to check the next hit in the array of hits. So if we pass both of our checks, next we're going to make a vector3 variable. We're going to call this direction from character to target. So again, this is just uh, the general direction from where we're standing and where the target is standing. We're going to equal that to character.transform.position minus target character.transform.position. Next, we're going to get the field of view in respect to where we're standing. So we're going to call this target viewable angle. And we're going to initialize that at vector 3 .sign angle, And then we're going to use our direction from character to target, comma, target character transform dot forward. Don't forget the dot forward part. It's very important. And then we're going to say comma vector 3 dot up. So this just basically gets us a viewable angle. And we got to be within this viewable angle to actually do a repost. So if I'm looking behind me uh, in respect to you and not right at you and I'm trying to repost you, obviously that's not going to work. So likewise, too, if I'm looking too far to the left or to the right, it won't work. So we're going to say if target character dot character network manager is repostable dot value, then we're going to check our viewable angle. So again, you can change this if you want. I find between 60 and minus 60, or rather between minus 60 and 60, is a very good set for this. It's uh, not too punishing and not too forgiving. You have to be looking pretty much generally at them. You could go to minus 45 and 45 too. You want to be a little bit more brutal with it and precise, but I find this is good. So if you pass this attempt repost and then pass the hit and then return, the reason why we're returning is because in the future here, we're going to check for a backstab if a repost is not present. So uh, to do add backstab check, and this is read perform the backstab. All right, cool. So now under attempt repost, let's just do a debug.log and just say reposting target. And we're not going to do anything else here. We're just going to make sure this works first. Let's save that. So let's make sure the check function works. Let's go to light attack uh, action. And where you want to put that is right down below here and right before we do perform light attack. Uh, again, it's not going to interrupt it here because it's going to put you in the repost animation and that will cancel your ability to perform light attack anyway once you're in uh, a performing action sequence. So let's just check that. Now, right now, it's not going to stop the attack, but in the future, it will. Let's go to the project here now and I'm going to just stance break this guy and then I'm going to see if I can try to repost him. Boom, he stance broke and I get a bit closer and boom. Yeah, so there it is, reposting target. Uh, but obviously nothing happens right now. We're not playing animation. We're not locking ourselves into an action. So we can now write the logic for this. Now, let's start by making a character manager variable and call it target character. And again, if you want to just pass that instead of just declaring it again, you can. I'm just going to declare it again by saying is equal to hit transform dot game object dot get component character manager. But if you want this just to require uh, a character manager variable instead, that's fine as well. We're going to say if target character is equal null somehow, maybe, I don't know, something happened and it got deleted in the same frame, return, that should never happen, but just in case. Uh, now let's go to the character network manager. Let's make a new uh, variable for is being critically damaged. We're going to use this a couple times throughout the series, um, probably two or three. Now, it's important here because we don't want to be able to critically strike the target if they're already being critically striked. So basically, if two people try to go up and repost the same guy, and one guy is a frame or two earlier, then the second guy is not going to be able to do a repost. So we're going to say if target character dot character network manager is being critically striked, then you just want to return. So we're going to say also if we're not repostable, we also want to return. So the three checks here will be is the target null? If it is, return. Is the target still repostable? Maybe something weird happened in that frame where he's not return. And is the target being critically damaged um, if they are return? So if they're not repostable, return. If they're null, return. If they're being critically damaged by somebody else, also return. All right, cool. Now, on to what's next. I'm just going to put these comments here as well. So it's very clear. I'm going to try to comment out all this logic because it is a bit dense. So we're going to declare a melee weapon item variable. The reason why it's a melee weapon and not a regular weapon is because you can only perform reposts with a melee weapon. We'll call this the repost weapon. We're going to declare a melee weapon damage collider. And likewise, we'll call this the repost collider. And then right below that, I'm just going to make a to-do. We'll come back and do this towards the end. Let's make sure it's all working first. Check if you're two-handing a weapon, uh, specifically your left weapon, because that's going to change uh, just a little bit how we handle the logic here. So let's leave that to-do, and let's just come back to that very briefly. 
So now, since we're going to run with the assumption right now until the end of the video that we're not using our left hand weapon, we're going to assign the repost weapon and collider as the right weapon because it has to be. Uh, let's go to repost weapon is equal to character dot character inventory manager. Uh, and I just realized we're on the character combat manager. So let's copy all of this and then go over to the player combat manager and override it because not all enemies are going to have weapons. So let's go to the player combat manager, which is why we made it a virtual void and not just a void. And then let's just override it here and continue writing the logic here because right now we're only writing the critical strike logic for our player anyway. Override attempts repost and let's go back now and copy everything from what we just wrote and delete it from here. And then we'll go place it into the player combat manager attempt repost. So now we're going to assign the weapon as the player dot player inventory manager dot current right hand weapon. And likewise, that's going to make our melee weapon damage collider the right hand weapon damage collider. But I feel like we don't have our um, weapon managers as public. So we got to check that too. Make sure you cast it as a melee weapon item or else you're going to get an error. And again, it has to be melee weapon because you can't do a repost with a ranged weapon or a caster weapon. Now, let's do a repost collider and let's just check. I believe it's in the player equipment manager. We have the weapon managers and I'm not seeing it here. So I think it's not public. So let's jump over to the player equipment manager. And yes, I was right. It is not public. Make both of these weapon managers public so we can access them. Alternatively, you could get the damage collider by just going to the model and using get component and children or whatever, but it's just better to fetch it from here since we already have it. So let's just say repost collider is equal to player dot player equipment manager dot right hand weapon manager uh, dot melee damage collider whoops don't need to cast that don't know why I auto completed that that's okay all right cool so what do we do next we're gonna go and make a or declare character dot character animator manager dot play target action animation and we're gonna use the animation repost uh, 01 so you're probably familiar with us overriding our animations with animator overrider controllers depending on the weapon so basically this animation might be different depending on your weapon set, but it's always going to have the same animation name. Uh, also, this should be play target action animation. Uh, so basically, I'm going to make a comment here. The post animation will change depending on the weapon's animator controller. So the animation can be chosen there. The name will always be the same. So this will always be what it's called, but you can override what the repost animation is on your animator overrider controller. So we're going to say if character dot is owner, because obviously the uh, repost animations will be different from, say, a club to a straight sword. We're going to say if the character is owner, character dot character network manager dot is invulnerable is equal to true. You don't want to be able to be damaged while you're performing a critical strike. This will stop you from getting knocked out of it. And now we're going to make a few comments here. One, create a new damage effect for the damage type. Apply all of the damage stats from the collider to the effect. And then using a server RPC, send the repost information to the target. And then, you know, do the rest of the logic on their end, take the damage and play the animation. So let's create a new script under scripts and effects. Take critical damage effect. This is going to be very simple. We're just going to basically derive this from the regular take damage effect. And we're going to take some information from that. It's going to be a super simplified version because we don't play any effects here. We handle that with animation events. We don't play any uh, animations here. We handle that already. All we're doing here is passing some damage that we will take at a certain point during the critical damage animation. Uh, that's it. So let's derive it from take damage effect. Start or delete the start and update functionality as is per tradition. Create an asset menu and call this whatever you want. I'm going to call mine take critical damage effect. Uh, override the process effect in here just like so. I think I did that off video. I'm just on accident. There we go. Uh, so go to the base class now, uh, the take damage class, and copy all the logic and paste it in here. Now we don't need to play sound effects or VFX. Like I said, we're going to do that via an animation event because it has to happen on a specific frame. We don't need to play directional based animation, so you can delete that. We do need to calculate the damage. Uh, and the stance damage is up to you. I'm not going to do any additional stance damage when you're being uh, reposted because you've already been stance broken. So let's make all of these functions on the take damage effect protected instead of private, just like so. Cool. Looks good. Um, let's go back over here now and let's just delete what we need to. And also, if you want to, you could make them virtuals like this if you want to override any specific logic, which we're going to do in the future with some. But for now, we can just keep it as, as is. All right. So I'm going to delete the sound effects and VFX. And I am going to delete all these comments that we don't need. Delete this one too, just reading this over to be sure. And like I said, I'm not going to do stance damage. If you want to do more here, that's entirely up to you. Just make sure you don't play the stance break animation uh, while you're being reposted. Just do it 
do a check for his being critically damaged. Um, I am going to say character dot character combat manager dot pending critical damage is equal to I, I believe we call it final damage, but I think it's private, so we need to make it protected. Let's go over here. Okay, yeah. So make all of these um, that are private. Just make them protected. It's just the one actually right there. So this is all we need. Final damage dealt. Um, and we're going to also change how the calculate damage function works so we can make that a virtual void because right now it's literally just going to subtract health from our character, which we don't want. So let's make this a protected virtual void calculate damage. And again, we're going to copy it identically. The only thing we're going to change is we're not going to subtract the health here and now. We're going to wait and let that be done with a, an animation event. So it subtracts right when that critical point happens in the uh, critical damage animation. So I am just going to go to where I subtract the health right here and just delete that line. And obviously you can come back here later on in the future when we have more logic and add on to this because it's going to be exactly uh, the same as the um, calculate damage that we're derived from. Now let's go back over to the character combat manager under the critical attack header. Let's add an int for pending critical damage. And this is the damage that's been calculated through the effect that we will apply during a damage animation event. All right, cool, let's save that. Now, scrolling down, you can see we have some of our comment done, but we still have to actually basically set up the damage effect in our game and put it in our library of effects. So create character effects, instant effects, take critical damage effect. This is under data effects, instant effects folder. And I quickly have to make this take critical damage here in the menu name so it matches the other menu names because I am a stickler for naming conventions. All right, let's go to the world effects manager and let's make a variable for it. And let's also add it to our total list here of instant effects. That's very important. So it gets an ID. Uh, let's go over here and let's just make a variable right below take block damage. So public take critical damage. So now we got take damage effect, take block damage effect and take critical damage effect. And that should encompass all of our damage effects. All right, let's add that variable to the world character effect manager and let's now initialize it here by saying take critical damage effect. I am going to call this damage effect and I'm going to initialize that as instantiate. Remember, always instantiate a copy, never use just the uh, the regular scriptable object because it will be edited everywhere. And then we're going to instantiate take critical damage effect. Uh, damage effect dot and then we need to set our values here. So physical damage is going to be the right or sorry, the repost collider dot physical damage. And if you have any other weird damages like scaling damages that you handle there separately for some reason, you can add those as well. Uh, but we just have the one. So damage effect dot, we just want to do all, but where's our damage types again? Holy damage, do the same thing. Reposter collider dot holy damage. Fire damage is the same thing dot fire damage. Uh, what am I forgetting? Um, lightning damage and I believe magic damage and that's it. Cool, so now we want to multiply all of these by the repost modifier, which we don't have, but every weapon should have one. Uh, I believe in Elden Ring and in Souls, daggers, for example, do more repost damage uh, than most other weapons. So I actually don't know for Elden for sure, but I do know in Dark Souls 3, it is absolutely true. Repost attack 01 modifier, and I'm going to initialize it and say, ah, we'll make it crazy. We'll say 3.3. .3. So this is going to be a 3.3 .3 times base damage modifier. And then I'm going to say damage effect, go through each of your effects, so physical damage, times equals repost, or sorry, repost weapon, uh, dot repost attack 01 modifier. And then just do the same thing here for all of your damages on the effect, and just multiply it by the modifier. Now, if you want to pass some poise damage here too, you can, but I mean, it doesn't really matter because we're not playing the animation. It does matter though, if you're trying to do some stance damage. So if you are conducting your stance damage, uh, you do want to pass poise damage. I'm not going to do that right here, right now. But again, if you want to do more stance damage when you repose somebody, now's the place to do it. So I am going to also get rid of that. Not sure why the autofill put that in there. Um, the only time you'd want to do stance damage maybe is when you get a repost via a parry, not from a stance break. Uh, but again, that's entirely up to you. It depends on how you just want the game balance to be. So for using a server RPC, send the repost to the target where they will play the proper animations on their end and take the damage. So this doesn't exist yet, but let's make it. Target character dot character network manager notify server of repost server RPC. Cool, and we're not gonna patch the variables that we need because there's gonna be a lot. So we'll go make that first, then we'll come back here and pass them. So I'm gonna copy the damage server RPC, client RPC and process character damage from server uh, because it's going to work actually quite similar to this. So we can reuse some of the variables on there. 
Um, and we can also reuse some of the logic that's happening, just change it a little tiny bit. So copy all of this, and then right below our new comment where it says critical attack, I'm gonna paste this here. And now let's just go and change a couple of keywords here. So it's going to be notify the server of repost. I can't remember if it said notify the server of character repost. Anyway, I'll, I'll change that if I need to, but just make sure they're all the same. So I'm just gonna say notify the server of repost server RPC, client RPC, and then process character, or sorry, process repost from server. All right, cool. So what's next? Let's go here now and let's add a couple variables. So string going to be the critical damage animation. And you can create a nice little utility function to get different damage animations for different sets if you want. But for now, we're going to keep it very simple. We're just going to use the one. Um, we're going to make an int here for the weapon ID. And we're going to delete some stuff here. We don't need the contact points or the angle hit from you do need poise damage if you're going to, uh, again, be doing stance damage if you have set the way. So you know what, I'll just include it anyway. I'll, I'll put it in my uh, my function beforehand too, even though I'm not using it. So uh, yeah, it's gonna be damaged character ID, the damager, so repostee and reposter, and then the weapon ID, um, and the critical damage animation, and then all of your damage types. So just go ahead and fill that in uh, wherever you need to. Make sure you got it in the proper order because that does matter. So be very slow and check. Because for example, if you put the magic damage variable in the physical damage slot, since they're both floats, it's not gonna complain. And you'll be inserting that incorrectly at some point in your uh, damage step. So take the time to make sure it is all in proper order. Go slowly and read it. Because you're probably not gonna notice for a long time if one of these is off. Okay, cool. So past the critical damage animation and the weapon ID. Good, what am I forgetting here? I think I'm forgetting the weapon ID. Yes, I am. So past the weapon ID, that looks good. All right. So let's come down here now into the process repo from server, delete those two bits of logic. And all we have here is our damage and our poise damage. That's cool. Change damage effect to take critical damage effect. And then initialize or instantiate rather the take critical damage effect from the world character effects manager. So you can see here, like all this is exactly the same. We're still getting the damage character and the character causing the damage. We're also going to get the weapon. Why are we getting the weapon? Well, let's say some of your weapons damage animations for reposting start in slightly different places. We're going to make a nice utility function that will know where to insert the character who's doing all the damage. So if you need to start in a slightly different place, we're going to make sure that you start in that place. So damage character dot character animator manager play target action animation past the critical damage animation true we are performing an action and now we need to move the enemy character to a specific place in front of us depending on what their uh, reposting weapon is now generally it's probably going to be the exact same place especially if you're working with your animator and you're discussing it like we're doing but sometimes especially when you're using stuff in the asset store you may want to position the character slightly more to the left or slightly more to the right to line up with where the animation is intended to be played uh, so we're going to make a nice grabber function here just to get a bunch of different possible places depending on your weapon class so let's just call start coroutine and we're going to call a coroutine that doesn't exist yet we're going to call it from the damaged character dot character combat manager and we're going to call it force move enemy character to reposter position or repost position and we're going to make this require uh, the character in question the damaged character and we're going to make it require a repostable position, which we don't have yet. So the position is just going to be like a little place that's going to get created uh, in this function. Don't worry about it. Um, or in the grabber function, rather. It'll be a vector three. We'll come back to that in a second. For now, let's go over to the character comment manager and make this force enemy move to character repost position. So I'm going to call it force move enemy character to repost position. Again, going to make it require a character manager for the character. And I'm going to make it require a vector three for the repost position. All right, now let's make a float timer equal at, at zero. And we're gonna say while timer is less than however long you wanna make sure this is still grabbing the place. I'm doing this see because if anything happens where you're moving your uh, position or rotation just a frame after the starts, it will mess up your centering. So you don't need to leave it for half a second, but just to be safe, I'm gonna let it run for half a second. We're gonna say timer plus equals time dot delta time. And what this is gonna do is constantly make sure the person who's reposting this character is put in the right position for that time. So let's make a private transform variable called repost receiver transform. Don't worry, we're not going to make this in the inspector. We're going to auto generate this right now. 
And what this is going to do is it's going to uh, create a transform under the reposted character's game object. So if the repost receiver transform is equal null, we're going to say game object repost transform object is equal to new game object. And we're going to create that and we're going to call it repost transform. And this is just going to be the, the position of where we're going to make the other player set at. So we're going to say repost transform game object dot transform dot parent equals our transform. And then we're going to say repost transform object dot transform dot position is equal to vector 3.0. So we zero it out so it's perfectly under us. And then we're going to say repost receiver transform, that variable we just made, is equal to this game object dot transform. All right, now we want to basically move this we're going to say repost receiver transform that local position is equal to the repost position that we passed and remember this is the thing that's going to change depending on your weapon type it probably won't if you're using all animations that are kind of the same but just in case this is just a precautionary thing i'm going to change this to enemy character so it's more clear also so we're going to say enemy character so the person who's doing the reposting dot transform dot position is equal to repost position transform or repost receiver transform dot position so the reason why we don't parent it is because netcode doesn't like me to do that um, without doing some extra steps. So this is just much easier. Then we're going to say transform.rotation is equal to quaternion.look rotation minus enemy character.transform.forward. And this will just make us face the character who is reposting us. Yield return null. There we go. Now we save. All right. So back over here, let's make that grabber function right now. Let's go over to the world utility manager. Now I'm going to copy the values from Nephilim. Um, we'll see if they work out here exactly. Might need to modify them a little bit especially if your animations are different you definitely will so public vector 3 get reposting position based on weapon class now we want to assign a general position anyway and if the weapon class doesn't change it that's great and if it does then we'll change it accordingly we're going to make this require a weapon class and we're going to call that weapon class so the default position for me was to first do a switch and we'll switch every weapon class we have in the game so the default position is going to be what i have from nephilim vector 3 going to call this position and it's going to be new vector 3 and the x is going to be 0.11f the y is going to be 0 and the z is going to be 0.7f now if you want that to be the same just have return position if you want to change that right before you get to the bottom you will change it here so change position here if you desire or if it's a spear you'll change it here if it's a medium shield, you can change it here. If it's a fist, you'll change it here. I don't think shields can perform a parry or a repost, rather, but if you want them to, there it is. Um, so let's now, instead of passing a position that doesn't exist, pass our world utility manager dot instance dot get reposting position based on weapon class, and we pass the weapon dot weapon class. And now we can add a extra bracket here because I'm missing one, and we can save that. Now, I'm going to quickly go over everything, make sure I didn't miss anything. I'm going to bet that I did, though. Oh, back here too, let's fill in our variables first. So again, take your time, make sure these are done the proper order. I've apparently not named it the same, so I'm just gonna search for it again. Um, well, there it is, notifies the server of repost server RPC. All right, so first things first, the damaged character ID. So character dot network object ID. Then it's going to be character causing damage, target character dot network object ID. And then it's going to be, what do we have here? Um, repost collider repost weapon dot item id yep cool and then it's going to be the damage animation so if you want to make a grabber function for that you can do the same thing and get it based on your weapon class but i'm just going to call it reposted 01 for now i'm going to keep it simple because we just got the one when i do add multiple eventually i'll come back and make a grabber function for that but that's something you can do on your own because it's definitely easy if you take the time to think about it and know you can do it so damage effect dot physical damage Next, we're going to do the, let's see, we got physical, magic, fire. Okay, let's just do them all in order. So we got physical, and then magic, and then fire, and then holy, and then poise, if you want to pass it. And I'm going to set up my poise, too, just in case. So damage effect, uh, poise damage, and I'm not really getting any right now, so I'll just, I'll grab that, too, on the damage effect. So basically, I'll set it up by saying damage effect, uh, poise damage is equal to repost collider, dot poise damage. That was my dog throwing his ball. Damage effect, dot poise damage times equals repost weapon dot repost attack modifier 01 and that looks good whoops didn't mean to erase that just trying to bring the bracket back up here on the same line all right cool now i'm just going to scan over everything save this um, let's go back into the animator here now and drop in our animations so if you are a patron i've included three of these uh in the description if not you can use your own and also uh this week i'm updating all of the weapon packs so if you own a weapon pack to have repost 
uh, animations and backstab animations. So it's probably not live yet because I'm going to do it Saturday and Unity takes a couple weeks to review it. So yeah, it will be up though. Every animation set will have repost animations, backstab animations, and everything you need for this. But if you're using mine, then set them up like me. And if you got your own, that's cool too. Set them up however you want. I'm just going to make a connection from my reposted animation down to my get up. And we're going to make sure we check if we're dead. So if we're not dead, we're going to get up. And if we are dead, we're just going to stay lid down. So go to the animator parameters, make a bool for is dead. Do this on all of your animators, humanoid und and uh, undead, whatever you have in the game right now. Make sure you're making these parameters. And then I am going to basically check and say if is dead is true or false rather, sorry, we're going to get up. So you can see it looks like this. You'll start getting up after you've been damaged. Otherwise, we're going to stay on the end portion of that reposted animation. So you're just laying there dead. Now for reposted, just make a transition back to empty and you need to make a transition back to empty if you survive the repost so that will go from get up face down and make sure you paste these on both the humanoid and the undead or whatever characters you have that can be reposted. All right, cool. That looks good. Let's save that. I'm going to go to the character network manager. Now we're going to make an, uh, public void on is dead changed. So a public virtual void in case you want to edit it differently on some other class or you do some other logic. But we're going to make this on, or call it rather on is dead changed bool old status bool new status. And all we're going to do is say character dot animator set bool. And we're setting the bool is dead, the one we just made to whatever the is dead status is. We can get that by going to character is dead dot value, or you can alternatively pass the new status. I'm going to save that. I'm going to go to character manager, the script. I'm going to go down to on network spawn. And we're not doing this for the owner. We're doing it for both because we need to do this on both ends to make sure the animation states update correctly. We're going to say is dead dot unvalued changed plus equals character network manager on is dead changed. And make sure you put that wherever it's going to look nicest to you. I'm going to put that just above right here and on network despawn. Make sure you unsubscribe in this event by doing the minus equals. All right, cool. Save that. Now I'm going to go back over to this notify the server repost because I've got this order wrong. I've just noticed, and that would have been very bad. So target character goes first, uh, and then the character goes second. Now I'm going to go over to the take damage critical effect and erase the base dot process effect. That would have been bad. I'm also going to make sure I go to where I said play target action animation for both the repost and the reposted and change it to play target action animation instantly. This is just preference. I don't like the blend. If you do, that's cool. You can keep it there, but I'm going to make it play instantly. I find it's a bit more intense. I'm going to save that. Uh, I'm going to come down here now. If damage character dot is owner, we want to say that we're being critically attacked. So we can't be critically attacked more than once. So we're going to say damage character dot character network manager is being critically damaged dot value is equal to true. I'm going to save that. I'm actually just going to move that up here too, just for the preference of it all again, just like this. And now we have to set up our damage events and oh, also our reset flags. Go to your reset action flag on the animator. If you are the owner, character dot character network manager is being critically damaged. That value is equal to false. Save that. Uh, let's go over now into the character combat manager. Make a public virtual void apply critical damage. So we have the pending damage stored because of our critical damage effect. Cool. What we need to do is play some effects, some VFX and sound effects and apply that pending damage. So character dot character effects manager dot play blood splatter effects will become play critical blood splatter effects. This doesn't exist yet. Don't worry. We're going to make it though. And now let's go right below that and say if character dot is owner, we want to actually apply the critical damage by saying character network manager, whoops, character dot character network manager. And then we're going to say pending or sorry, current health dot value minus equals pending critical damage. All right, cool. So now let's go over to the character effects manager and let's check out that play critical damage blood splatter effects. And we're going to say, just copy this and change the name to play critical blood splatter VFX. And again, all we're going to do here is just like add a keyword critical to this and just make the variable for critical blood splatter effects, both on this and on the world of character effects manager. The reason why you have it here is for example, the example I can use is you're going to generally use the same one on the world character effects manager, but for skeletons, I don't play blood. I play like a dust splatter. So that's where I change it. All right, cool. So I'm just going to do that real quick. Copy this, paste it. All you're doing is just changing the variable name. So this is on the character effects manager, uh, blood splatter effect, paste it becomes critical blood splatter effect. Apply critical damage. We can pass the character dot character combat manager dot lock on transfer position. This sort of blood will just instantiate. So it's best to do it there. It's best to center your character. And then the world character effects manager, uh, paste blood splatter effect, call it critical blood splatter VFX again. 
And I'm going to quickly make this just right now in video. I'm going to take my regular blood splatter effect and just amp everything up. So the speed, uh, the amount, and uh, yeah, that's it really. You don't need to change the size, just kind of add more particles. So I'm going to double or triple the speed and then kind of like double or triple or something in between that, uh, the amount of particles that come out. So the count, and I'm going to change the name to effects critical blood splat red. And then I'll go to where my regular blood splatter is and I'll drag this in as a new prefab. And then you only need to put this in the world effects manager. Uh, like I said, you're only going to drag it onto your character if you're using something different from this. This is your default one. Cool. And uh, I'm going to save that. Now let's also say character dot character sound effects manager play critical strike sound effect. Uh, so I'm just going to, this doesn't exist. Also going to make this right now play critical strike. How do I have this worded sound FX? Cool. And then go and make that functionality just by copying another one, changing the name and then referencing a variable that doesn't exist yet on the world sound effect manager. Because generally, unless you want this to be different, you're probably going to use the same critical sound effect for each character. That's what Elden and Souls does. So I'm going to copy that and paste it here. So action sounds, let's make one called critical sound or critical strike sound effect. And then drag whatever you want for that sound effect in there. Now go to the place on your repost animation where you want the damage to happen and the sound effects and blood to play. And then paste apply critical damage. And lastly, don't be like me and pass the wrong character. Make sure you're passing the character causing damage when you force move your character. Otherwise, something really funny will happen. So let's go into the game now and test this. If I go in, I'm just going to stance break the gentleman using the straight sword. Going to bait at his attack here. Swing. And now perform the repost and boom and boom there we go the damage comes up and he does not get back up because he is dead you probably can't hear the sound effects because i'm using a recorder that doesn't record sound but if you put yours in it should be playing for you now all right guys thank you very much for watching a couple notes before i go one like i said if you have any of our weapon uh animation packs be on the lookout for an update it will come out in the next few weeks and it will include a repost a backstab and a couple of animations uh so you can use Basically the same setup I have in Nephilim that I showcased at the beginning of this video. We are going to cover backstabs next and then parrying. I'm going to actually do parrying first. Let's see how I feel. Um, so if you guys want to see any additional logic or anything specific in regarding those two sets of functionality, please let me know. As always, I hope you enjoy your weekend very much. Thank you very much for joining me here. I will see you guys next week in the next one. And a special thank you to my patrons. It is genuinely because each and every one of you get to keep doing this. And I love doing this, so you have my sincerest gratitude. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next one.